It's a tough world out there. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization or in the corporate world, your competition is growing stronger by the day. In response, you have two choices. First, you can keep on doing things as you've done them before, only with more effort and capital put behind them. However, as most people will tell you, you'll probably just end up with more of the same and end up losing market share to your most savvy competitors. Or you can take the second approach and expand beyond what you traditionally view as your place in the world and enter into creative partnerships that help propel your brand and organization to new heights. In Cause Marketing for Nonprofits, Jocelyn Daw paints a vivid portrait of how nonprofits and corporations can partner in creative ways so that both sides of the table come out on top. In the next 12 minutes, you're going to learn exactly how to create your cause marketing plan and get the leg up on your competition. The Read For Me Idea Code is a shorthand system to help you quickly memorize the core concepts so that you can apply them in any situation. The idea code for this week is 7P7C. Download the handy and beautiful idea code poster included in your membership for details. Number one, what is cause-related marketing? Let's start out by defining exactly what cause marketing is. It was first started by Amex in the early 1980s and it has four key elements. First, it is a mutually beneficial collaboration between a nonprofit cause and a for-profit corporation. Second, it combines the joint assets of the two organizations in order to create shareholder and social value. Third, it is a way to build personal relationships with a wide range of groups, from employees all the way to suppliers and the general public. Lastly, it is the combination of self-interest and altruism that supports community and publicly communicates the values that the organizations hold to all participants. That early vision by American Express to support 45 local causes clearly demonstrated that doing good in the world and making money are not mutually exclusive. As Jerry Walsh, the senior VP at Amex at the time, put it, We were giving money away but we were doing it in a way that builds business and helps the cause. If you're gonna head down the road to create a cause marketing program, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, the focus is always on the cause, not the charity. As an example, the cause that Feed the Children would be working for is hunger. The issue, and not the charity, is to take the spotlight in the campaign. Second, the campaign needs to be presented in a positive light. Since a company is going to be attaching their name to the campaign in order to sell more goods or services, the campaign has to have a positive rather than negative slant. For example, in a hunger campaign, the focus would be on the good your joint partnership is producing to eradicate the problem, rather than on the problem itself. Lastly, the campaigns can be national in scope, but the impact and implementation of those campaigns should be localized. Number two, why would you do this? If you're going to be successful in creating a partnership that produces results, you also need to understand what motivates the person or the other side of the table. This holds true no matter which side of the cause marketing table you sit on. What motivates corporate partners? If you are a nonprofit seeking a partnership with a corporation, here are the most important desires you should understand and be able to fulfill. A. It is an employee motivator. It has never been more true that an organization's most important assets are its people. Increasingly, employees are looking for motivation outside of how much money they make in order to feel fulfilled. Many studies have shown that employees are more likely to be loyal to their organization if they have a connection to a nonprofit organization. B. Companies are under ever increasing scrutiny. It's no secret that there's a shortage of trust in major corporations these days, especially with the leaders of these organizations. With the advent of social media, these companies have nowhere to hide, and they know it. Good or bad, information about a company makes its way online for the world to see. C. Consumers are increasingly socially conscious. This flows from the point above in that consumers are willing to change brands if it means they're able to support a cause that is near to their hearts. D. They want to increase shareholder value. 
More than ever, companies want to understand how the program is going to have a positive impact on their bottom line. Make sure that when you're proposing a partnership with a brand that you've demonstrated that you understand this and can articulate how working with your nonprofit serves this end. What motivates nonprofit partners? It is equally important that corporations understand the needs and drivers that motivate their nonprofit partners. Here are their main desires. A. They need more resources. Without access to resources, financial and otherwise, it is impossible for the nonprofit organization to operate. This is as important for the nonprofit as increasing shareholder value is for the corporation. B. Achieving their mission. Of course, those extra resources are required for a reason, and that reason is to achieve their mission, whatever it happens to be. Understanding what their mission is and how you can help is critical. C. To be relevant to the communities that they serve. Just as corporations are being held to account, so are nonprofit organizations. They need to be doing work that is relevant to the community that will be holding them accountable. Don't even think of approaching a partner for a cause marketing program unless you've thought through these issues. Three, how can you use cause related marketing? Now that you understand what cause marketing is and what the motivations of your partners are, let's dive into the specific types of partnerships that you can devise and execute on. As we are going through this section, make some notes on which elements you're able to take advantage of. There are seven different ways that you can use cause-related marketing, and they all start with the letter P. Number one, product purchases. This is the most traditional form of cause marketing in which a portion of the proceeds from the sale of an item go to the cause. The most famous recent example of these would be the red branded products with proceeds going to fight the spread of AIDS in Africa. Number two, purchase plus. This is a type of partnership you'll often find when checking out at a retail store, where you'll be asked to support a cause by adding it to your purchase price. That additional portion will then be donated to the cause by the company who was collecting it. This is often one of the easier forms of cause marketing to be executed in the market. Three, licensed products. This is when a nonprofit licenses the use of its logo and or name to a company in return for a fee or royalty. If you're a nonprofit, one of the assets you have is your brand, and this form of cause marketing will allow you to monetize it. Number four, issue promotions. This is the second most common form of cause marketing where a company uses its promotional activities to create awareness of a societal issue. Usually, it will be accompanied by a direct donation by the company to the nonprofit as a way for them to show their support for the cause. Number five, cause promotional events. This is where an event is co-branded with the company and the cause. The company uses the power of their brand and marketing resources to support the event. In return, they are perceived both in the community and within their company as being committed to an important cause. Number six, cause programs. This is where the company and nonprofit combine to co-brand a specific cause program. An example would be when a company sponsors a specific exhibit at a museum such as when 3M Canada and the London Regional Children's Museum partnered to bring the 3M Science in Your World Gallery to life. Number seven, public service cause marketing. This is when a company and nonprofit come together to support a social issue in the community, like when the Boys and Girls Clubs of America teamed up with Crest to develop Crest Healthy Smiles. These are typically deep relationships and are usually focused on impacting behavior. Think about the different ways you could partner with different organizations, keeping in mind both the seven P's and the motivations you'll need to tap into in order to make it happen. Number four, the framework for success. Finally, it's time for the rubber to meet the road. Luckily for you, Jocelyn has made this section easy for you to remember as well. The crafting of the program is in seven easy steps, all beginning with the letter C. Number one, cause. First, you'll need to align your organizational goals and assets to position yourself properly. This should include cataloging any and all assets that you could bring to a cause marketing partnership. The previous two sections prepared you for how to do it properly. Number two, collaborate. 
In this phase, you'll be searching for the appropriate partner. There should be a good mix of partner, purpose, passion, and profits. The goal at this point is to ensure that you both are aligned on the bigger picture. Number three, combine assets. This part is simple. You'll sit together with your partner and combine your assets to see what type of partnership would make the most sense for you to work together on. Number four, create value. Once you've decided the best way to work together, work together to figure out how you'll best generate the most value for each other's organizations. It's critical at the beginning that you clearly define goals, expectations, and benefits for each partner and what success looks like. Before you leave this step, you should create an agreement that puts in writing the details of the program, including who will be responsible for the different parts of the program and how decisions will be made throughout the partnership. Number five, execute. Okay, this one is an E, but who's counting? This part is made infinitely easier if you've done the appropriate work in the first four steps. Ensure that you are following through on your commitments and holding up to your side of the bargain. You'll need a clearly defined internal structure in order to manage the delivery of the program. Number six, communicate. Make sure you're communicating with your partner on a regular basis in an open and straightforward manner. It's amazing what issues can be prevented if you communicate regularly. This is especially important if you're going to miss one of your commitments you've made to your partner. Also, make sure to make an effort to learn the language of each other's sector. What might mean one thing to you might mean something entirely different to your partner. This step also includes how you communicate with the general public about the program. Working together with your partner to craft these messages is critical to the success of the program. And finally, number seven, community and corporate outcomes. As Jocelyn says, Cause marketing is about a win-win-win for the nonprofit, community, and corporation. In this last step, you should be celebrating your accomplishments, evaluating on what worked and what didn't, and building on what you've achieved so that you're building a long-term partnership. So there you have it. Your first steps towards creating a cause marketing program that produces results no matter which sector you work in. Our hope is that you'll take this information, implement it, and you'll dive deeper into the book to really master the ideas that Jocelyn has so greatly articulated that we simply can't fit into a 15-minute summary. Hi, I'm Rhonda, and this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!